Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series on engineering mechanics. And we're going to kick off today's session with problems based on centroid calculations. And in that regard, I'm going to start off with this I section, this unequal I section, right? And eventually you're going to see, we're going to be taking up a whole lot of problems based on L section, based on T section, S section, Z section, and a whole lot of complicated problems are going to be dealt in this particular series on centroid calculation. So let's begin with this problem. Here we go. Well, this is an I section, first of all, and this essentially is a combination of three rectangles. You can see that very well. And let's say these rectangles are numbered, let's say from bottom one, two, and let's just say this over here is three. Now, first of all, let me tell you, I forgot to mention this, this, um, this, in fact, I section is symmetrical about, about this axis over here. If I can, if I can make an axis over here, uh, maybe with a black color that will be better something like this. It's symmetrical about this y-axis Okay, this vertical axis rather I should say That's exactly what I was trying to mention now if that is so if that is so then one thing is for sure That the centroid of this particular I section should definitely lie somewhere along this um, dotted line the height at which that centroid lies we have no idea about that, but we can work that out eventually. Okay, fine. Now let's go ahead. And first of all, let me have the coordinate axis. That will be better. Um, it's it's something like this. Yeah, pretty good. And now let me let me fit this in properly. Yeah. Let me write. This is the y axis, and this over here represents the x axis. So what we wish to do is we need to fill in this table corresponding to these three rectangles. We have the values of their areas, their corresponding x coordinates and their corresponding y coordinates. Let's kick off by calculating the areas. So first of all, we have this rectangle. This its area is going to be 30 multiplied by 5 and that's 150. Pretty simple. Secondly, we have this area. Um, this is how much that's 5 and this is how much that's 15 for 5 cross 15 is 75. Pretty simple. And then finally, we have this 20 cross 5 and that's 100. So if, to, if you sum them up, the total area that we're going to work out is going to be equal to this is 5, 7 plus 5 is 12, carry 1, that's 3, 325 centimeter square, obviously. Well, this calculation will be done in centimeters. This will also be done in centimeters. Now let's go ahead and let's calculate the value of x1. Okay, this is going to be x2 and this is going to be x3. Now guys, watch carefully. This, this essentially represents the value of x1, okay, that's x1. This represents x2, x2 and this represents x3. What's common in all of these? Their lengths are common, okay. So since the centroid of all the individual rectangles are lying on this vertical line therefore their x coordinates are going to be same and all of them are going to be equal to 15 let me tell you that okay so this is how much that's 30 so half of 30 is going to be 15 so x1 will be 15 x2 will be 15 and x3 also will be 15 now we only need to worry about their y coordinates okay now you can say that their individual centroids are represented by c1 um, c2 and c3 right now let me have a different color let me have a red color this over here, this small distance that you guys see is what you refer to as y1, okay. This distance over here that you see, that is y2 and this distance over here, okay, that's y3, extremely sorry, I cannot draw a straight line with the help of this pen tablet. Okay, so how much is y1? This is how much in totality from here till we reach here. That's 5. So half of 5 is 2.5. So y1 is nothing but 2.5. Pretty simple, straightforward. Okay, so in order to get the value of y2, you need this distance. Okay, and you can clearly see from here to here, this that distance is how much? 15. So half of 15 is 7.5. So that's 7.5. So in order to get the value of 7, uh, y2, we have this, this much from here to here, that's 5 plus from here to here that's 5 5 plus 7.5 is 12.5 that's 12.5 done 
and then finally we have to find the value of y3 and that's also pretty simple how much is this tell me that's half of 5 that's 2.5 so you need to add this length from here to here to this 2.5 then you can finally have the value of y3 this is going to be fairly simple um, this is 5 5 plus 15 is 20 20 plus 2.5 is nothing but 22.5 okay so that is essentially done now 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 what can we do well we have this final formula in order to calculate the value of centroid okay it's something like this it's a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3 over well a1 plus a2 plus a3 this is the formula that you're going to use to calculate the x coordinate of the centroid and then you have one more let me use a different color for writing that let me use a green color and that's yc is equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2 plus a3 y3 and whole divided by sum of all the areas in fact okay and guys when you put in all the values this is exactly what you're gonna get xc will work out as 15 and yc will work out as 10.5 nine six both of them in centimeters let me let me write th that also so that's it that's exactly how the centroid of an unequal i section can be calculated and that was pretty easy okay so guys that was all from my side for today if you've got any doubt or query do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of mechanics then do share and like this video subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification, you get an update. Anyways, needless to say, I'm going to be back with more such videos on mechanics and drawing. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnak signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep learning. Thank you.